Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. All right, what I've been working on today, and it's been a lot more uh, drawn out process than I was really hoping that it was gonna be, um, but I decided I wanted to get the, the little uh, spacer that I needed to make for the, uh, for the motor. I need to space the motor farther off the firewall. Um, and that firewall was set up a little farther back than necessary because it's always easy for me just to make a little standoff. Now, getting the measurements was easy. All I had to do was just come on in. I started with measuring the motor. So the motor itself, when it was measured, see if I can get this so you can see it. I'm gonna switch back and forth between SAE and millimeter today, millimetrics. So anyway, when I came in and got the measurement on what we're looking for, we are at pretty much two inches. It's 2.001 inches. So we went with two inches. And then I came in and measured from here out to the, uh, just want to get this thing right, there we go. So I came in and measured it out to here, and this ended up being 200, uh, excuse me, uh, 2.182 inches. Alright, so with the 2.182 inches with the 2 inches, I knew that to have it so that it was flush, so that the, so that the little, so that, oh my gosh, I'm dropping everything so that the spin, if the spinner was flush up against the front of the airplane it had to be 182 thousandths out I wanted to have that 30 thousandths of an inch standoff um, so I just added 30 thousandths to it so what we were looking at was we had to get it out to 212 thousandths right around about there now because I didn't want to have to try to put little metal tubing on the back of that motor because it's got to slide inside that the hole through the front. It's going to be easier if I've got a flat plate that A, either I can just tack glue it to the back of the motor or if I wanted to I can have it with some uh, like a contact adhesive on the motor and then run some glue on the other side of it so there's some like a pot, not epoxy. We could just go with some thick CA. Once you line it through and get the holes lined up, it, it would probably be set far enough. But I think if I just use some uh, some kind of just glue, or I'll figure out something on how I want to get that set up, um, attach it to the inside, uh, because I, I really don't ever act, expect to take that motor off unless the motor burns up or something else happens. So, <coughs> so what I ended up doing was. Uh, I found some wood, plywood, and I started adding things together. And because uh, the 212 thousandths, um, it, that was going to work out really close to eighth inch, sixteenth uh, inch, uh, and uh, probably like a thirty second inch. Um, but when I put the thirty second of an inch on the outside, it was a little bit too fat. It was just it was more than what I wanted to stand off. So I went and grabbed a little piece of 64th, and when, lo and behold, when you glue that together, this and this is with, this is with the. Uh, sorry about that. I'm making sure I don't drop something. And this is with the, the thick CA, uh, because you know it's going to uh, stand proud just by a little bit. When I measured the wood, it came out to 206 thousandths. So I had basically five, five and a half thousandths that I, that I, to play with. And I figured, well, the CA is going to probably take up it, at least half that. So when it all got glued together, that's what I got. So it was a thousandth of an inch shy of what I was looking for. So boom, so there it is. So that's all glued put together. So then what I did was on the motor, I had to find the points. Uh, for the center of the the attachment holes. There's four of them there. So what I did was go back to the old uh, tried and true Cut the block make it square go from the corners find the center. There's the center of the circle Did a circle on the outside. It doesn't have to match that outside circle, but I'll get it close And then what I did is I came in got the inside I measured from the inside span, whoo, there we go, from this side over to this side on the holes. Let me get it so that, there. All right, so from this side to this side, I measured the outside uh, dimension, and then I did the inside. And then, of course, add them together, get an average that's dead center on them. So that came up to uh, 985 thousandths, dead center, dead center. So I cut that in half, came out, made my marks. Everything lines up on this, and I've just got to go ahead and drill this out. So that that I'll I'll do off camera, 
uh, and I'll bring you back when is when I want to show you how well it fits. Hopefully, it's going to fit well. Now, the other problem is that the hole on the inside of this is eight thousandths, the mounting hole, right, the big one in the middle. The shaft on the motor is six millimeters. So I say eight hundred thousandths. That's eight mil and six mil. So you have that play. You can't deal with that, you know, two, th two, two millimeters of, a, uh, of an inch, two millimeters uh, different. So what I had to do is I had to find something that uh, I can use as an adapter. Now, on the DH71, my de Havilland with the same, with this, I found out I've got a bigger spinner on a de Havilland. It's a two and three quarter inch, not a two and a quarter inch, uh, but it's got the same motor. Back when I got that one, uh, two and a half, almost three years ago, it these things came with uh, ad adapter spacers, so you can go uh, from six mil to eight mil, uh, and they don't anymore. So uh, through Hobby King today, for probably about an hour, I was trying to find any way to search through. I even went back into my old purchases for March of 2016, where I bought the one for the De Havilland, and I couldn't find anything in there. Uh, there was nothing, so I mean, so apparently it came with the adapters. Um, so what I ended up doing was I can either call a buddy of mine, Greg, who who, does, who is a machinist. That's what he does, um, to have him make uh, a spacer for me. Um, but what I decided to do is dig through my little stash. Now in my stash, um, from had to be, you know, I built so many planes for myself as well as other people. Anything that doesn't get used. I still have, so that's why this whole shop is a junk drawer. Um, there were little standoffs for motors, for motor mounts, not not for not for a prop, not for a spinner, but for a motor mount. Lo and behold, it's an eight millimeter. But because it's four millimeter on the inside, you've got to get make that larger. So this is this is how I work. This is the way my brain works. All right, what I did, and I'm going to show you the best I can, came over to the drill press, put this on, it was like a number four, I think it was like a number four drill because it fits very nicely in here. I came up on the inside, I'll get it, I'll get it. I put that on the inside and then just snugged it up and then just pulled the drill bit out. So now this is my lathe. It's my vertical lathe, not my horizontal lathe, because I have this up on the inside. Then the next step, for those of you that hear me overanalyze everything, I, I drilled a slot in the top of this thing a, a long time ago. And it's one inch, uh, I think it was about two inches up. It was it was about a thousandth of an inch from being perfectly vertical. That's good enough for what I need it for, for working in the shop. So all I had to do was just come out in here. And then just bring this inside. And as I'm lowering it down onto it, before I even spin it up, I come in and I move this around until the drill bit is no longer moving back and forth, four and a half. That way you know it's pretty much centered. Then I'm going to go ahead and do it to this one just because it will give me a spare. So what I did is turn it on. Run it down through there very slowly. And that does not get me to eight millimeters. It gets me close. But it's not eight mil, so I, I or excuse me, six millimeters. So what I did is I came over and grabbed a, I think it's a seven. Let me get this right. It's a seven sixty fourths, which is just a little bit shy. It's probably about two thousand shy of being uh, six mil. So I came in and then I mounted that in here. get this mounted on the inside and I came back in and did the same thing got this set up so it's bumping right in the center and 
and now I've got my eight millimeter outside, six millimeter inside. So that was what I did, and you can see it's a little teeny one right here. Let's see if we can get it to focus on here. Uh, I made it the the height that I wanted to, which was about ninety thousandths high, and then because it's a tight fit on there because it slides on here but down here on the shaft it's tight what I did was I just pretty much came in and just beveled the inside of this and then came in and then just pressed it on and uh, it, it's on there and it's not going to fall off and now when you put the spinner on it it's a slight press fit on there so it doesn't come off slight press fit and it's, it's rock solid so as soon as this thing uh, Gets, as soon as you put the prop on here and it compresses down and tightened in there, it's not going anywhere. So, so there we go. That's how I did that. And you saw how long that took. It, it took me maybe to get the other thing cut apart, uh, to cut the way I wanted it cut. Um, it probably took overall maybe 10 minutes. Um, so. It was 10 minutes well spent. So this one I'll put in my little stash. That way if I ever need to uh, make another one, it's pretty much ready to go. So yeah, so anyway, so that's uh, that was that part. Now let me go ahead and get this cut out and then we'll see once I get this kind of somewhat held into place, I'll bring you back in just so you can see how everything stands off and then we'll find out what the clearance of this is because it should be right around 30 thousandths. Right, as you can see, it's on straight. Not 100% happy. One hour later. All right, there is my little pseudo prop that I put on there. And it's, I think it's about an inch across now. I had to resize it for width just to fit down here in the spinner. So I came in and just cut the equal amounts off of both sides, which was 175 thousandths I cut off of both sides. So, uh, that just made it so it's gonna fit inside there. I snugged it all up. Now I will show you how I got this all mounted and lined up properly as soon as I get done with this little short little section. So uh, what I did was this, first of all I rotated it out and made sure this was vertical. So this was sitting vertical and what I did is I took this little level, it's a Pro Smart. I came in, I lined it up to here, and because I didn't know if this was completely, you know, properly vertical, I didn't know if it was 90 degrees to level on the table, and it didn't really matter, because what I could do is I can come in on here, turned it on, and then, let's see if it'll still read, turned it on, and then I reset this for vertical. So this came up to be, it's kind of coming in close. It's 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 dancing a little bit, but it's one point. It's pretty much zero. So I'm hoping you can see that. So what I did is I came up front and turned it around this way. This is going to be really hard for me to try to balance out. And it's it's dancing around because I'm moving it, but it's pretty much about zero. So this is where this ended up being one tenth of a degree down versus the tail. So seeing that this is uh, uh, perpendicular to the thrust line, that's 90 degrees, that's 90 degrees, we're good to go. So, so that's set up, then I just came in, rotated this sideways, used my little blocks to get it so that it was sitting level, and I came from this edge all the way to here because I know that this, when I put this together and glued it in, this was 100% accurate on from, from center line, from the very corner here up to the nose and both the same on the side. So this came out to 36 and 15 16 inches. This came out to 36 and 15 16 inches from the, from the prop so I know it's all true. So, all right, let me get the, both cameras set up and I will go ahead and show you how I got this put in place accurately, how I wanted it. Because as you all saw earlier in the video, uh, this was off. It was sitting a little bit too high and sitting a little bit too far off to one side. So, and it's just, I should have done it the way that I have it set up now. I should have mounted it the same way before. 
I had put the measurements in on this before I glued this into place and that's where the error came out. You can see where I had to, to plug the holes because I needed some fresh wood to rotate the motor to, to lock it in. So it's no big deal. That's just some, uh, um, sorry about that. That's just some bamboo pretty much just glued in. So you just peg the hole, glue it in and it's done. So that'll be fine. All right, now first of all, what I needed to do is I needed to have a way to make this so that this was gonna be clamped in vertically. I needed to have this so that it was sitting I mean, it didn't have to be 100% vertical. I just need to have it so that when I rested and put the motor down inside of it, when I lowered it down, it was going to want to sit firmly on that little backing plate, that spacer I made. Um, so in order to do that, I figured the best way to do it is to mount it vertically. So now this is where my little building stand came in to work very nice uh, because I know that this edge over here is pretty much vertical. I was able to come on in and have it just register on the on the leading part of a little canopy hatch when i came in i had a piece of balsa there it is on the bottom of the motor and then i took my little quick grip slid it on and just lightly snugged it up so when you take your hands off it's sitting vertical and all the problems went away so this is all bolted in and glued in i'd like to take it out just to show you but it, it's let's just kind of go with this is the land of make-believe. Make-believe that it has not been installed yet. So, what I ended up doing was that little teeny round disc, I glued it to the back side of the motor with all the, with the holes properly lined up for the bolts to go through. What I ended up using was just some foam tech. It's, it's made by Be uh, Beacon Adhesives, I believe. Yeah, Beacon Adhesives, you can get it online. Uh, it's really good, it's foam safe. That's what I use whenever I do anything with foam airplanes. Uh, but it's a very good contact adhesive that works with anything, you know, with wood, with metal. So uh, what I do is I put that, so the motor was out. I glued the little piece onto the bottom with just a couple little dabs, let it set up for about a half hour, came downstairs. And so when this was lowered in, so this went down on the top of that. And then if I can locate it. So what I did is I came in and I took the parts that come with it to hold it in place so I put that on the center to hold it down and then put this on and then just snug it up so that way we know now that the spinner is sitting uh, flush to the to the mounting plate on the front of the motor alright so then what I did at that point was came in put some thick CA on the bottom of that spacer and then I very slowly lowered this down in two and then as soon as it hit you got a very short amount of time to get a uh, pretty much balanced out. So what I did is I came in with my fingers, looked over the top of it, got it set up to exactly where I wanted it on the front and then just held it. Just stood here for about a minute and it set up and everything was good. So then I just ended up taking it apart and then taking the motor, rocking the motor back and forth a couple times. And when the, the, the adhesive, because it still hadn't fully set up and this stuff never really full hard, fully hardens anyway. Uh, but I was able to just pop the motor, slide it out, and then at that point it was just uh, pretty much a matter of me putting the motor back in and putting the bolts through. And it's in there. As you can see, it, it still needs a little bit of fine tuning, but you know what doesn't. I've got probably my 30 thousandths, yeah it's probably about, still about 30 thousandths off. The, on the bottom over here you can see, let's see if I can get it set up. You can see it stands off a little bit on the bottom, but what I'll do is I'll come on in with balsa because I want to have it so that the bottom of this, because I don't know if you're going to be able to see it from your angle. I'll see if I can get it. It stands a little proud of the bottom, so I'll just go ahead and just sheet the bottom with a little bit of balsa and then just sand it down. So what I will do, because I will go ahead and I'll put it in the picture right there. I'm ordering another prop uh, spinner for it. Um, the other one they call it a turbo spinner because air can flow through so that air will be able to flow through here through the motor and then out the back side uh, that won't make it in for a couple weeks probably because of the holidays uh, but it's alright so um, I will have that one in and mounted before I finish that part of it so hopefully by that time when that comes in this plane 
hopefully this plane will be ready to just about cover in a week and a half because I've got this whole week off. So that'll be pretty much me. Any spare time I've got, I'll be down here working on it. So, all right, so the motor is mounted and I'm really happy with that, uh, with the way everything's set up. So uh, the next step, I think, is gonna be to go back inside, flip the fuselage upside down, get the uh, uh, control lines through. To, to put them, I'm not gonna glue them in place yet, but I wanna get those through because I wanna make my little cross piece in the back side of it, in the rear, and I'll re-explain that when we get to it. Uh, but I wanna put a, a cross beam uh, to so that way I've got something to and I got to figure out how I want to block them in there but I want a cross beam so I can keep the control lines coming down the center of the aircraft until it gets to the back um, and then I'll make the anchor I call it an anchor um, up front you know probably about yay far maybe about an inch and a half two inches um, from the servo uh, just to have that so that's where that's going to finally anchor the tube not not the slide through not the not the not the control rod that goes through the tube but just to secure the tube um, in the position I wanted it at. All right, that was pretty much a successful day. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the results on getting that engine mounted, uh, and it's just gonna be the little parts where I'm gonna go ahead and fare in around the nose so we can get that better blended into the, uh, into the fuselage. So. Okay, so I'm thinking what we'll do next is we will work on uh, getting the uh, uh, servo mounts for the ailerons uh, installed. So, and that's just gonna be a matter of taking the little blanks, the little square blanks that, uh, that I originally cut out when I was putting everything together uh, for the wing. Uh, and then we'll get uh, everything, I'll show you how I get everything marked out uh, and ready to go on how I want the servo horn to come out to the bottom. Uh, so, anyway, that's about it. So I'll see you guys next time I'm down in the shop. Later.